Um, I'm going to get diving into today's training on um, really simple tips for eight days to really just take it to the next level. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, if you're a small business government contractor, one of the things I really want you to remember is it's your job to make it easy for the federal buyer to find you and to work with you. Don't make it hard for them to find you. Don't make it hard for the federal buyer to work with you. We call this friction, right? There's this friction or this barrier between the buyer and the seller, between the government and you. And you want to make sure you remove that. People buy from those they know, like, and trust. Uh, if the government buyer doesn't know you, then how can they like you, right? If the government buyer doesn't know you, how can they trust you? And if the government buyer doesn't know you, then how on earth can they buy from you? Right? People buy from those they know, like, and trust, and you need to make it easy for them. And my tips today is going to kind of go down to that. One of my biggest frustrations in the federal market and in government contracting, especially with the federal government themselves, is their blindness to baby steps. They really look for the biggest possible initiatives out there that they can uh, drive towards instead of looking at these small steps that are right in front of them. Um, and from my perspective, sometimes it's the little steps that can really help us uh, drive forward to the success. And in particular for you, it is just simple steps that will drive to your success. It will not be some big major initiative. Those tend to always be too big, too far away and often fail. But little steps measurable in days or weeks, right? Those are things that really can drive to success. And that's what we're going to talk about. Three simple steps 8 day small businesses should be doing. I'm going to focus on 8 day small businesses today, but every single thing that I talk about today you can get rid of 8A and put in HubZone or Woman-Owned Small Business or just any small business because it's all pretty straightforward. I'm going to cover down in three sections of today's training. The first thing is in these three uh, simple little steps, right? Be visible, be focused, and be writing. Be visible uh, means make sure that you're visible to the federal buyer and teammates when they come looking for a company like yours. We call it also findable, right? The second thing is be focused. When you're doing business development, capture, sales, et cetera, you need to be focused. If you're unfocused, then your results will be unreliable, unpredictable. But when you're focused, they'll be able to be pretty reliable. And then the last would be uh, writing. Here, I want you to let buyers know how you can help them. Let them know that you can help them. Remember, people buy from those they know, like, and trust. And uh, when you write out there, it's one of the ways that you're able to do all three of those with just something you write. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. If you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I want to welcome you to my federal sales training where I provide tips for success in the federal market. I also provide you an opportunity to network. So make sure you're networking in the chat, let people know who you are, uh, your core competency, et cetera. I spent 20 years as a small business owner in the federal market. And since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret, it's just a process. When we follow a process A to Z, we're going to have repeatable predictable results. And that's what I want for you. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the Government Contracting Success newsletter. This is our newsletter where we're constantly putting out even additional, more content um, than separate from our training that is really valuable to your success as a government contractor. So get in there and subscribe to it. It's uh, When you subscribe, you'll be notified by LinkedIn every time we put a new issue out. The other thing is um, our next training tomorrow, make sure you register we had over 100 people register for today. Tomorrow's training is government contracting uh, or GovCon conferences, um, planning guidance. I'm going to really make it around like today is around 8A, but helps everybody. Tomorrow is going to be around Navy Gold Coast, but it's guidance for any conference or event you go to, how to have success. So make sure you register for that. Um, oh, so I uh, just wanted to pause for a second. One last thing before we get started is congratulate the newest person, newest company to come into the 100 Club um, for GovCon in a Box. And you'll learn more about GovCon in a Box in a minute. But we have a, a visibility score. This is how visible are you to federal buyers. And you can have a maximum of 100 points. And you can learn more about this in the tool itself. But Epic IT, uh, Binder Tal here, and I, hopefully I pronounced your name correctly, uh, they just did their, uh, I watched them do effort, just incrementally moving it up from a low score all the way up to 100. And so we just want to welcome them into the 100 Club and congratulate them, as well as congratulating the 23 other companies that are in the 100 Club. To put it in perspective, there are 358,000 small businesses in DSBS that are actively trying to sell to the federal government. 
24 of them have a score of 100. The rest do not. It's really important to be visible, and 100 Club is one way to do that. All right, let's talk about being visible, and we'll go in and I'll show you uh, the other one in a second. So when I talk about being visible, you want to be visible to uh, federal buyers, right? The, the, the heading of this slide is describing the who. You want to be visible to federal buyers, and that's a whole pool of people. That's the small business professionals. That's the acquisition professionals and contract officers. And it's the program office uh, folks who have the need, uh, who deal with the uh, management of contracts, who deal with the budgeting side of the contract. So there's this huge pool of people who are um, in there. And then there's teammates, right? I just said there's 358,000 small businesses. And there's, you know, I don't know, a thousand. I don't even actually know how many large businesses. That'd be a fun thing for my team to help me get because I only support small. So I don't actually care about how many larges there are, but um, there are a ton of larges. And just to put it in one perspective, Boeing, when I was working with them a couple of years back, um, told me that they have 14,000 internal buyers within Boeing alone. So when you think about all the largest just in the top 100, you're talking about a lot of buyers. These are business developers, capture managers, uh, contract administrators, or supplier diversity people. So there's a ton of buyers within these large companies as well, as well as all the small businesses. So um, that's the who, right? And the reason you want to be visible to all these people is because uh, with all those people, the hundreds of thousands of buyers and teammates, you can't knock on their door. You have to be dependent on them finding you. If you're visible, they can find you when they go to look for you. But if you're invisible, what we call virtually invisible, meaning if they tried to search for you and find you, they wouldn't be able to, then you're not going to be even invited to the table to get rejected. You want to at least get to the table so you can get a yes or a no, right? And so the reason you want to be visible is to make sure that all that inbound traffic, the 99% of the uh, sales activity that happens in government contracting can happen. You're knocking on doors. You going out and proactively talking to people is only 1% of the entire pool of buyers. And so you want to make sure you're visible. Um, how you can be visible is a pretty straightforward thing. And the first thing is just remember uh, how, how, excuse me, not how you can be visible, but how people find you, right? It's important to understand how people can find you when you're thinking about being visible. First thing is government buyers, teammates, et cetera, they're just like you. And they search for vendors just like you would search for a plumber. Or if you need to get a haircut and you're in town or something, you would go to Google. You might go to Yelp or something, but you're going into the internet and the web and you're searching for um, the, the vendors that you're looking for, right? And buyer, federal buyers are the same uh, way. They go out and they search for a company like yours. They might type in cybersecurity or uh, additive manufacturing. Whatever the term is, you want to make sure that you understand that they're just searching for you the same way. You hear about NAICS codes and some of these other things, but the reason those aren't good search uh, methods is because if I search on a NAICS code, there's going to be thousands of results coming back. And so I'm going to have to filter it down. So I don't even bother searching on the NAICS code. If I'm going to search for software development, um, I'll get thousands of people. But if I say SharePoint software development as a keyword, now it's really narrowing in. So you want to make sure when you're visible, you think about how would they try to search for you? Let me make sure I'm doing that. And I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about. But um, basically, these are keywords. How do you, uh, if somebody searched on a keyword, what are those keywords? We're going to roll out a new tool. It probably be next week. Uh, I don't know. It might be this week, but it probably be next week for sure. But this new tool that will uh, be free, and you can use it to create keywords that um, you can put into DSBS, et cetera, which is the next point. Um, so it's an automated thing. It'll save you a ton of time. We've been doing this for years, and we'll take it from hours down to seconds. Um, so let's talk about where buyers look for you. They look for you in DSBS. The dynamic small business search is the small business profile, which combines SAM data with the DSBS data, and it creates a small business profile. That's the number one market research uh, tool that's out there for federal buyers. Some of them have their own internal vendor supplier portals or agency portals, right? These supplier portals like HHS. Yesterday, I put out a whole guidance on how you can register an HHS. They have their own supplier portal. And I think they have like five or 6,000 small businesses registered in there. Out of 358,000, only 6,000 are registered in HHS. And when you think about that, if a buyer from HHS is looking for a company like yours, they'll first go to their own agency portal trying to find a company. If not, then they'll go out here. But if they can find 
five or 10 companies that do what you do in that supplier portal, why would they ever go out here and discover you? So that's the second place you wanna be tracking, uh, making sure you're registered in there. And then the third place I put is LinkedIn. We're all here on LinkedIn. One simple tip I can give for you is make sure you upload your capability statement into um, LinkedIn. You can put it in in the experience section. You can put it in as the featured section, as a PDF. You can copy and paste the contents into your about section on your profile, right? And when you do that, if somebody's searching for a company like yours, they'll they'll discover you. And I've had people look for risk management framework as an example, cybersecurity type stuff, and they'll come into LinkedIn. I've had larges tell me that's how I go find smalls because I'm always asking, right? How do you find smalls? Let's figure that out. The last thing is, um, when do federal buyers and teammates look for you? They, it's kind of always, right? But they do it, uh, I put ideation, I don't know if that's a word, but you get my point. When the program office is thinking about a requirement, they're thinking they might want to do stuff. Well, nowadays buyers, you, me, and the federal buyer, they're smarter, they're, uh, they're more empowered to do research before ever talking to a salesperson or a company. And so they'll go out on the internet, they'll go out to DSBS, whatever it is. And so during the ideation phase, when they're just thinking about uh, an opportunity or requirement in their words, then they'll go out looking for companies like yours to learn from and maybe have discussions. And then as it moves into the more formal side of the acquisition process for the federal government, we call that market research. And so th they'll start doing that more formally. And this is what I mean by DSBS. And this is where they start actually writing down their efforts to do market research to justify any final decisions they do. And for industry, we, we do this in capture, right? If we identify an opportunity at whatever stage, we start thinking about what teammates we, we want. Um, I talk about building a requirements gap analysis. That way you can understand the task areas. And if you're weak on some, you start looking for folks. Larges do this, smalls do this, we all do this. If we're, if we're looking at an opportunity we wanna pursue, we think about whether we need teammates and then we go out and look for them. And so you wanna be visible when a large or a small business is looking for a company like yours. Okay, so let me, I wanna stop sharing one thing and share another thing really quick, hold on. Um, so I'm gonna do this, do this. And hopefully I did this correctly. So uh, I took us over to the tool really quick, GovCon in a box, and I just wanna show you what the visibility is. I'm coming into this feature of ours company browser where you can find teammates but the first thing I wanted to show you, right, bottom right-hand side, or excuse me, right there, you can see there's 358,000, and this number changes every single day, but roughly 350,000 companies are active in DSBS. And so if I take this visibility score slider, and I say, show me the 100 companies, you see that we've got 24 in there, right? And, and this is visibility. You wanna make sure you're tracking it. Another way I might do this, let me reset the filter, is I might say, show me everybody who's got experience and who also uh, has a keyword, let's say cyber security. Hopefully I did that right. Um, let me see if this works out. There you go. So I just said, show me companies that have experience and there's 1100 in there and 46. And so as a person who is looking for a company like yours comes in, they can start filtering it. Maybe they filter it by state, locality, or maybe they say, you know what, I'm looking for 8 days since that's our topic today. Show me 8 days that say they do cyber who um, who have experience. And when I say have experience, I mean it's either in USA Spending or DSBS. And so that's why you want to come in here and raise your score to 100. You're not coming into some proprietary tool uh, where you're putting your data in our, uh, our place. No, we're just giving you guidance on how to go back to the government's tools um, and so you can do all that on your own. You don't even need to talk to us to, to track on that. Okay, so let me stop sharing really quick. Uh, stop sharing. I'm going to bring my slides back up and I'll finish the training with the slides. Uh, there they are. Okay, so make sure you join the visibility or the 100 club by being visible. Okay, so the first one was be visible. The second one is be focused. If you're thinking about how can you have more success out there, being focused is vital. Uh, there's this line that talks about uh, if you chase two rabbits, you're not going to eat dinner tonight, right? And imagine just being on a farm or somewhere and you, it's your only food is going out and hunting your food down. Well, if you chase two rabbits, you're never going to be focused on one. 
Uh, this one will turn this way. This one will cut in front of your path and you go that way. And then this one will go here. We also call it shiny object syndrome. Uh, a lack of fo focus means if you see a shiny object, you're like, oh, let me go look at that. You can tell this when you think about opportunities that come up that are over here. They're in your peripheral vision. You said, I want to go this way and I'm going after opportunities that are this way. Yet in opportunities in your peripheral vision, you're like, what's that? That's a lack of focus. But if you're focused when you're doing business development, it'll increase your chances and it'll reduce your time to get to success. And that's what I want you to do. So a couple of areas where you can focus on. The first thing is focus on what you sell, right? And uh, it just occurred to me I wasn't sharing my slides. So <laughs> let me show you that really quick. Um, so the first thing is focus on what you sell. Um, sell one thing. I see too many people not only not focusing down uh, in, in, in a particular area of focusing down a little more, but I see you in unrelated areas. For example, software development and project management are not the same thing. They're two totally different areas. And so you're either a software development firm or you're this. I see people come in and say, well, we do cloud, cyber, and data. If you're a large company, then you can do cloud, cyber, and data because you have you know 100 people or 1,000 people. And it makes sense that you have these different verticals of expertise. But if you're a small business under 25 people, let's say, then your ability to go beyond that is unrealistic. But more importantly, it's unhelpful to your ability to grow. If you focus down on one thing, instead of cloud, cyber, and data, you say, hey, we're gonna do data. Well, then what happens is you go after opportunities that are data related. You start getting past performances that are 50,000 here, $100,000 contract here, $250,000 contract here, a million, a million, a million here. You start building up past performances all within the same space. I did this in my last company where we were SharePoint focused company. And that's all we responded to was SharePoint, uh, SharePoint opportunities. All of our past performance was basically around 80% of it was around um, SharePoint opportunities. We could go toe to toe as a small business against billion dollar firms. Right. I hear about people talking about graduating to large and they have to cross that valley of death. I'm like, I don't even know what they're talking about. We were competing with the commercial or with the uh, larges as a very small company because we kept having better and better past performances. So focusing down allows you many different things. You'll see it in a minute on the next slide. But one of the most important things is it allows you to really identify those slam dunk opportunities, the ones your company is best at. And then you can pursue those over and over again so you can build this body as past performances. Another area you really want to focus on are uh, target agencies, right? You want to make sure it's big enough that throughout that entire uh, agency, you could see yourself making at least a $25 million uh, annual revenue win or whatever um, from, from that agency. It doesn't mean you're going to go off and get it today, but like, let's say you're in there and you're in there year after year and you're building more and more, winning more and more contracts that that agency or that customer that you're choosing has got to be big enough that you, even with the losses that you might have, will still be able to win enough business because they spend enough on what you sell. And so you only want to go big enough on agencies to get to that point, and then you stop, and that's focused. You certainly don't want to be focusing, in my opinion, if you're $25 million and below, don't focus on DOD and civilian. Pick one department in the civilian side. Pick one department in DOD and go in and go, you know what, we're going after 25 million. And because it is hard to do that, we let ourselves get distracted. We go other places. And the problem when you're distracted is you really chase two rabbits and you don't have success. But if you look at DHS as an example, where I just put out uh, the strategic plan this morning that they shared, and I'm looking in there and I'm seeing they got artificial intelligence, machine uh, learning pro or, uh, missions and priorities. I can look in there and go, man, that's the future. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to sell in there until I get to that stage. I'm going to work with other companies so I can subcontract under them and build business as a sub, maybe build business as a prime if I'm ready for that. But I stay focused on one agency and I learn everything I can. If you're an 8A small business in particular and you see a one-off opportunity over here that somebody brings to you or something, that's okay. But when I say focus, I mean focus on the agency that you want to learn. Business development is about understanding an agency better than it understands itself, building relationships and identifying opportunities. That's very hard to do when you're tracking on multiple uh, agencies or multiple customers. You want to focus that in and then become really good at it. 
And as long as you keep it big enough, so an example is CMS was big enough for one of my friends to build a $100 million company doing data alone, right? CMS is just one agency within HHS, a department, and they built a $100 million company just in there. It's uh, possible. You just want to look at what you sell and align it to this. Last thing is um, the relationships you want to develop. You really want to focus those as well. And in this particular case, I'm talking about focusing them on more of a uh, you know weekly or monthly basis. So you're going to go out and try to develop relationships. Keep them focused to a common thread. An example would be maybe next month in uh, September, I'm going to plan to go out and develop relationships with uh, teaming partners who are on Oasis because I want to go after opportunities that are on Oasis. And I don't care if it comes out as Oasis large or small or 8A or this pool or that pool. I don't care. I want to be able to have access to any one of those. And so I want to build relationships with people who are willing to introduce me to opportunities. And so um, those relationships, just focus them down. It really uh, allows you to be able to focus your effort. Okay, so my last tip here after be visible, be focused is be writing, right? If you really wanna increase this, you wanna be writing to let federal buyers know that you exist and how you can help or that you can help, right? And so um, really just helping you understand first off how writing can help build those relationships with federal buyers. Think about this, when you write a response, by the way, when you write a response in your sweet spot and you're writing it to your target customer and you're writing numerous ones, when you write it and send it to the government, it does not go in the garbage can. It does not go into hard drive unreviewed. When the government receives these things, um, they look at it, they consume it, they decide what they want to do with it. But for the most part, the acquisition personnel who are putting this out, the, the RFI and sources on, and the related program office, they're going to look at it and they're going to see you. They're going to learn from you on uh, whatever you put inside your, your response. And that's going to help them begin to know, like, and trust you. What they see in the document will help them uh, like and trust you. I like how they say this. I trust what they're saying because they back it up, which I'll talk about in a second, right? But um, writing can help you build a relationship because your document, that response that you're sending can get in and have meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings with your target customer without you even being there, right? You are putting, and I know this is a little <laughs> weird, but you are putting yourself and your company on a piece of paper and you're sending it to them and, and you that piece of paper is having the one-on-one -on -one meeting with the other person, no interruptions, they're reading it. And if you write a good response in your sweet spot, then those people are gonna know, like, and trust you. Not every response is gonna lead to something, but when you write enough of them, you will find traction, right? Um, second thing is respond to RFIs only in your sweet spot. I've already kind of alluded to this, but this is really important. Don't beginning, don't write responses thinking you're going to win contracts that are out there. Even if you do, you're not going to build a strong company. A strong company is one that is built on a strong foundation of a focused core offering, um, of an area that you're a subject matter expert. But so responding to RFIs in your sweet spot, it also makes it faster and easier for you to do. Um, you really get it. And you can really begin to communicate to the customer that I get what you're saying. I see what this agency has a need around what we sell. This agency and this agency, they have this similar type of needs. Um, you're able to pass the lessons learned from one requirement document to another. You really begin to understand what you sell as you begin to understand what they want, right? The way they're describing the need for your solution or your product. The next one, bullet three here is write for the win. This is so important. When you write a response, don't just blah, push a capability statement out. Every single RFI I write, um, even when they are not as good as I would love them to be, are written as if I'm writing a proposal for a $100 million opportunity, right? I'm writing a proposal response. That quality, that level to an RFI or sources sought notice, that's how I write. I'm writing because I want to push the competition out. I want to wow the customer so much. They're like, man, uh, this is a compelling and convincing response to our sources sought notice, right? And compelling is this idea that they're like, wow, I really want to do this. I could see this. We go here and here. And yes, we do this. I really like what you're telling me, but I'm not quite sure. And that's convincing. Convincing is, look, we have done this before. Like I said, we did SharePoint in my last company because we could sit there and say, we did this at the White House. We did this in the Air Force. We did this at DHS. Whoever is reading my compelling case or approach, 
is now convinced because I'm not just past performance backing it up, but the stories are backing up or convincing them that yes, you too can have the same experience. And the last bullet I have here is just when you write to your sweet spot and you respond to RFIs to that focused agency, you really start getting better over and over and over again. So here's what I want you to remember from today's training. What I want you to ask yourself uh, as you go into your activities, right? Are you visible? Is your company visible to the very people that you want to find? Just go get the 100, join the 100 club and, and that takes care of it. The second thing is, are you focused? Have you narrowed down what you sell and who you sell it to? And then the third thing, ask yourself, are you writing enough? Are, if you're writing enough, then are you writing for the win? Compelling and convincing uh, responses to the sources sought in RFI notices. Yes, you can respond to RFPs. You don't need me to tell you to respond to those, uh, but you do kind of need encouragement to write to the RFIs and sources sought for the win. Just remember, government contracting, it is not a secret. It's just a process. I'll see you in the next training.